Good morning. I am taking you along with me and I'm going to show you guys what my life is like for a day in the life of a university adjunct professor. I've never seen a YouTube video like this. Um, I haven't looked, so... <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, I haven't. Therefore, I haven't seen, so I like to stop and get a coffee. Um, my husband, Brian, is dropping me off, and I'm gonna head in to grab some coffees, and I'll be right back. I'm racking up the points. Ready? I'm racking up the points. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm vlogging today. Do you want to be in my vlog? Oh, no. I'll no. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think this is a regular croissant. One is almond croissant. Then I have one regular brew for you. And then one mocha for me so that um barista is awesome he looks like very intimidating and he doesn't look very nice when i first um started coming here but now he's super super nice it's 8 20 right now the class starts at 9 30. i like to get in at nine o'clock it's really calm like no one's on campus and so i just head in there uh set up there's some stuff I want to communicate. There's so many things I need to ask. There's so many um, things I need to remember, like who turned in their assignment. I know this is kind of basic, but when you're shifting from working in your business to teaching, it's two different things. And I, I'll talk a little bit more about that. It's just two different mindsets. So I need to shift into like teaching mindset, share certain information rather than doing the like information if you know what i mean like tasking and not really having to communicate with people that are brand new in the subject you're communicating with a lot of professionals and consultants in your day-to-day -day when you have a business it's a little different i take about 30 minutes i give the class about 15 minutes to come in finish any of their projects or finish um, a sketch or orient themselves and you know just kind of get settled. This oat milk mocha from Bluestone Lane is so delicious. Normally I get the um, vanilla just regular latte with oat milk. If you haven't tried, if you have a Bluestone Lane by you, if you haven't tried the mocha, I would definitely try it. It's delicious. We're passing the Krieger Museum. We gotta go in there. Oh my god! Jesus. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh my god! Oh my god, I'm here so early. Okay, well, um, this is called the main house, and this over here used to be a parking lot for faculty, and I thought I was gonna be able to park right out in front. I do have a faculty parking pass and ID and all of that stuff, so that's something that you do get, obviously, um, when you teach. And so, normally I'll park back there, but um, actually Brian's been dropping me off for the bulk end of the, <laughs> the second half of the semester. So, thank you, Brian. And, fun. yeah, so Brian goes and works at a coffee shop. Here is where we say goodbye to Brian. Goodbye to Brian. <laughs> and head out. I have this gargantuan bag and my tech bag. Don't drive off the, the things on the roof. Right. <laughs> It's honestly this spring semester is the best. I know I keep on saying that, but it truly is. The grass is like immaculate. Honestly, post um, COVID, this campus is way prettier than when I went here. This used to be like a place where you go and get your parking pass and stuff like that. 
but now it is going to be a family campus hub and here are some of the renderings. I know I've showed this on my IG, but it's going to be a little um, campus hub club. They're going to have a coffee shop, which when I went to school here, there was no such thing. Everyone always had to like get their coffee before they came on campus. But now they're going to have this, which is super cool. So this is the building that they're redoing. And then there was no um, cute little cross path over here and all of these Adirondack chairs. There's so many of them. Um, before it used to be just that, like those two chairs and that um, picnic table right there. But this is my hall. Basically, Gayak is where I went to school. All my classes were in here. This was the interior design floor. This is, this is some of my students' work. We did Joseph Albers' homage to the square, um, kind of dissecting color based on a character that they developed and also the emotions that were connected to that character. Here's the classroom. set up at the podium and this is the view so gorgeous I remember taking um, 2d I'm an alumni from this school obviously um, but I remember taking color theory and 2d design in here and I love this classroom so much I'm like so bummed out that I didn't have when I was a student but these tables and chairs I would have literally loved coming in here um, they just had like those types of tables, like cafeteria tables, I think. Okay, so the time is nine o'clock. Again, I got here a little bit early, so um, this is just really nice because I'm able to focus, I'm able to check my email, see if any of the students had emailed me anything, if they sent anything for me to print, it's a little too late. So um, because sometimes access to printing can be a little chaotic um, and printers act up, if a student sends me something, I'll print it, you know, because I have access to a printer, but if you send it to me late, then we are gonna not be able to do that. So what I do now is basically go on to Marymount, my Marymount, and this is where you can access your Canvas or Blackboard. And as a professor, adjunct professor, um, you have a faculty one, and so you sign in and you have a Canvas course that's on the faculty side. Um, so I have a course, instead of being a student, I see it from the faculty side and manage everything that's on there, um, like the syllabus, and that's something else we can talk about. So gathering together a syllabus before you start. Um, I started really early, so it was um, a little bit of a rush, especially for my first time. Um, normally it takes about a month to two months to onboard um, someone, but they really needed somebody, so I took two weeks. Um, I'm also an alumni and very familiar with the faculty here, so that's why I was able to also get it done so quickly, but it was still a rush, you know, so, um, but I was able to uh, create a syllabus and kind of um, use that two weeks to kind of figure out what I needed for supplies and I coordinated with another professor that's teaching this class for the first time and that was really um, enduring because I would have hated to have to start this on my own and not have that person to just kind of like even though they're doing it for the first time too just you know they're more um, you know they've been a professor for a while so it was nice to like touch base with them on like simple prof professorial etiquette you know like what do you do if someone says they're sick what do you do if someone's coming in late what do you do if someone doesn't hand this assignment in etc because you know those things are the things that you start asking yourself it's kind of funny um 
honestly, the the most complicated things are the things you never thought that you would have to think about as, as a professor, I will admit that. Um, let's see, so I go into my roll call and I just open up a tab to take attendance. So when students are coming in, um, sometimes if I don't have that tab open, I'll forget. I'm like, oh my gosh, who was there that day? Um, so basically I just have that opened up. Um, I look at the announcements. I had already, uh, what I do in the announcements is every, my class is every Monday and Wednesday. I'll open it up and just do an, uh, an announcement saying what you need to bring into class. Um, sometimes I send it a little late, but at least I try and get what you need to bring to class and what we're going to be talking about class. Because sometimes, um, because this is my first time teaching, I defer from the syllabus slightly because um, some of the stuff on there, I'm like, oh, that's not really kind of what I, how I would like to teach it. And like teaching 2D and color theory for the first time, um, there was another professor that teaches it and she's been teaching it for a while and she said that she, um, whoever teaches the course, because of how interdisciplinary the course is, it's really from the professor's point of view and like what their background is. And I'm an interior designer, so my background is completely different than what was on the syllabus. I um, kind of was referencing a syllabus from a past professor that um, was more like a traditionally trained painter. And so I had to kind of like mess some things up and move some things around so it was more to um like my point of view and something i can teach by so yeah uh, basically today we are going to be going over what is going to be our final project so we're in week 14 and um we have two more weeks left until um, finals which is basically i'm just going to do a portfolio review um, and so that's a review of all of their art projects that they've done throughout the semester. And this one's going to be on atmospheric perspective and also um, uh, color dissection. And so with Joseph Albers' homage to the square, we're already super familiar with like looking at color, um, selecting color, looking at the chroma, looking at the value, looking at um, the intensity and all of that stuff. So we're going to get a little bit more into that. What I have them doing um, is basically we reviewed a video from Studio Ghibli and this was about um, the creator of Studio Ghibli, um, Heao, and basically what his method was to creating these beautiful scenes. Um, and there's a lot of details and atmospheric perspective and um, color and hue value scales that are shown in these uh, environments. So we're creating one of our own. So we're doing a Studio Ghibli project scene. Um, so I'm also gonna go over how that's gonna be laid out today. And also, um, what the final project is consisting of and how we're going to go about it. So I'm basically going to do this poster um, because we've learned about um, composition and now it's going to be kind of a little bit more editorial where we have a bit where we talk about the scene in which um, we've chosen, the students chosen. So like one of these, for example. This is a little thumbnail. And so we're basically, they're gonna pick one of these out, one of these scenes, um, and we're going to talk about like, okay, we're gonna put your character in here. So you can use the Ghibli character, you can use one of your own characters, um, and kind of develop how the color that you dissect from this scene makes up the character. And, um, we're gonna have a color palette um, dissection scheme over on this side, arranged from like high to low value. We're gonna have a little blurb about um, like a paragraph about what this scene in particular is according to you, like if you were writing it. And then I'm going to have them sketch a picture of their character and then to do a no tan study, value study of their character in another box. And I have this all laid out and I'm going to tell them about it um, today I'll kind of show you guys but this is a um, this is a project that I kind of uh, made up on my own like 
for the beginning of the semester, I really stuck to um, what projects were like already completed for this class and um, that past professors have done because, you know, I didn't want to continuously create new um, assignments and new projects like every single time because they're actually really hard to conduct, especially when um, they're just in general, but I was about to say, especially when you are um, working and have a business, but like even as a, like a full-time professor, like it's still really hard. So I have a new appreciation for those who teach because if you want a very immersive, like cool experience, which I had at, at Marymount, like now I know what it took for the professors to have those assignments, to teach that level of lecture, etc. So really interesting and now I have a whole new appreciation but what I'm gonna do now is just check my email and take you guys with me I hope I didn't talk too much but take you guys with me on how I arrange everything I'm gonna be talking about for the day and then show you bits from um, class um, I don't think I'll be able to show you the students unless they consent to being on my vlog but other than that yeah let's put everything together that I printed off um, and so there are a couple things that I wanted the students to be looking for in the composition one was atmospheric perspective um, and then two is a good composition it has to have a scene that influencers influences the viewers perspective um, with the perspective influencing emotion with the details um, Hale was extremely observational. He was an idealist. And um, this is what pushed his ability to create a depth of character and richness, richness, richness through immense capture of detail. So that's what we are looking for. Um, so kind of what I wanted them to search for was, um, does it showcase depth, density, visual, pictorial landscape? Is there visual balance? Is there a focal point? Um, is there high intensity, low intensity? And in almost all scenarios, there should be both. Um, and does the scene visually expand or contract? And expansion and contraction with color um, is done through using either high intensity or warm hues, which um, end up expanding and then low intensity, which contract, or cooler hues contract. So if you have like a blue square and then you have a red dot in the center, it's gonna look like it's coming towards you. But if you have a red square and a blue dot, that blue dot is gonna look, in the center of the square, it's gonna look like it's receding. And that's what um, warm and cool colors with intensity do. They expand and contract visually, which is really cool. That's why a lot of trees in the front are yellow and the ones in the back look blue because of atmospheric perspective. There's like this blue haze that happens um, in the background. With density and atmospheric perspective being a, vid a visual phenomenon in which the atmospheric density progressively increases, hazing over the perceived world as one looks into the depths. You know, blue mist. So. Um, basically what we have here is the final project. Um, we use Bristol. If you're an art student, you know all about Bristol. I have a nine inch by 12 inch setup and we're going to be discussing this particular example of a, a composition with the scene description and then the color dissection from um, high intensity to low intensity. It's called the character poster, due April 24th, and giving the objective as well. Um, 
and I'm gonna discuss that in class. But basically, I'm gonna do a demonstration with what the composition is going to look like with just having these three pieces right here and I also have more um, in here that two by five inch text and the one inch squares. Hey. Okay, so this is one of our Marymount students, Donovan, and he has this amazing value study of Tupac Secure. Yeah. First time doing a value study. I love it. The jewelry just looks so good that, you know, texture and the more you step back, oh my gosh, it literally looks like a photograph. You did so good. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Did you enjoy doing this or? Yeah, yeah. it was actually really fun to do. Amazing. So I'd do it again. You would? Honest, yeah. Oh yeah? Yeah. Um, how long did it take you? It took me, I can't paint for like a long amount of time because I can't sit down for long. So it took me a couple of days, but I really grew to enjoy the process, I guess. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, because you said you'd use the zones and then you started to just eyeball it with the yeah. values. Yeah. Because we, we did a value scale mm -hmm. and that was helpful or kind of, sort of? It, it was more it was instinctual. Helpful, yeah. Okay, awesome. Are you excited about the next project? Yes. Okay, yay! Let's see your Ghibli scene again. Okay. Amazing. The atmosphere, like literally atmospheric perspective. Like that's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Good pick, good pick. I can't wait to see it. Thank you. Thank you. Yay! Dang it, I didn't press record. Uh -huh. Okay, let's do it again, sorry. Oh, no, you're <laughs> that. That's crazy. <laughs> okay, so take two. <laughs> All right, so here we have Ariana, and she is wonderful with keeping up with her sketchbook. We have them for our homework, and she also does them on her own. Um, I had an Alexander Gerard doll, and she sketched it. Didn't have to. Literally made my day. No, I absolutely love it. <laughs> but I want to show you guys some of her sketches. This is amazing. She actually was sketching this for our project. Um, and that's her studio Ghibli. Yeah, I'm trying to base it off like the Ponyo like little oh guy gosh. here, but then I changed like the hair and stuff for a different character, but that's so good. Trying to do the color dissections and everything. And it's so much on the right path, just making sure like you have this kind of black and white value study and then you're coordinating that color. So even if you turn that into black and white, like your yeah, image, yeah, yeah, then yeah. you can, you know, color coordinate based on value. No, it's I'm really so excited for this project. Yay, well thank you for sharing. Of course. <laughs> So now what I do is I will hand back graded artworks. I basically used the front half of the studio time to discuss with the students about the final project, what the objective is, what I'm asking for. Um, here you'll see me like going back and forth, um, helping out the students. And uh, basically if they have any questions, I'll help assist. So I'll go from table to table and kind of give them pointers. Um, here I'm talking about uh, chroma and value and the scale that we're going to derive and dissect from their Ghibli scene. Um, and I'm just talking about um, what chroma is and what value is and um, high intensity and low intensity, etc. And I'm just handing back out some pieces. But I like to um, kind of do all the admin stuff while I'm in studio time personally for me so I don't have to do it outside of um, class time and be organized so like for homework announcements um, project announcements I type that up in canvas and stuff and just kind of go back and forth with questions while we're in studio and in progress so here is um, some of the progress we're making the class is over it is a 11 51 that was a day in the life of a first semester of my adjunct professorship at Marymount University. So um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope that um, you guys um, found it interesting. If you have any questions about um, anything else, if you're interested in how um, you can uh, become a adjunct professor, um, any tips and trips, uh, <laughs> tips and tricks, um, or like what you need to do to prepare yourself in order to get into this role, 
Um, I graduated in spring of 2020 and I started to run my own interior design business from 2019 is when I opened it. So I had my business in school and then I continued to work um, after I graduated in 2020, 21, 22, and now it's 2023. So I have a lot of um, professional experience and practical experience and I was able to come in and bring that back into um, the course and kind of be able to do that. But there's so many other things that you need to um, be good at in order to be a professor. Like it's very, very interesting. Like you don't realize that in a studio that's two and a half hours that you're lecturing for about an hour and a half and then continuing to talk. So you're like talking for like two and a half hours. It's, it's actually exhausting. Um, but to be able to show up with information that is actually interesting for an hour and a half lecture and preparing lecture and bringing visual aids and then also bringing things for, um, you know, to do a demo or to have thumbnail examples. Like, how are you gonna show it? Are you gonna use the projector? Are you gonna use the board? Are you gonna bring materials in? Um, what does your class need to have for the day? You know, like, what do they need to bring into class? Um, what do you need for a materials list? Like, all of this stuff. So I wipe the tables down because um, pencil gets on it, paint, cuttings, everything. And sometimes when another class comes in, you know, they get it on their clothes and, you know, also stops the spread of germs. So it's always good. <laughs> 